Buzz. Ah, oh, busy day today. Lots of tech problems around here. I don't know. Busy day. Is it a full moon? Is that what happens when there's you know a full what? moon? This morning when my husband got up at 6.30, there was a full moon outside. So I don't know why it would still be full moon. You could see the moon still at 6.30, but. Yesterday, yeah. it looked like a super moon. I don't really know what a super yeah, moon is, except really that I think big. it's really big. But it was super big yesterday. It looked like it was like a mile from the Earth, man. Well, totally that's why cool. they call it, um, that's why you have the Lunar New Year. Oh, yeah? I, I don't know if it's still Chinese New Year. Is it? Are we know. still we're celebrating that? I don't know. But if that we're not, goes, let's do it. That's based on the, the, the size of the moon. So ah, go. there you go. Could be that. <laughs> so what else is going on? I see you're in the office. That's good. We're, we're in the office and uh, Suzanne is here working on our documentary project. How's and that going? we had our interns here who are scanning all of our articles that we've had for the past. And they came to me and they said, oh, we just finished through 2016. Are we finished? And I said, no. <laughs> so I got them the new, new notebook of articles. So they're scanning all those. Super cool, because they're all going to be in P uh, PDF and um, in PNG, so that you can see all of our press articles. OK, so this is like our whole press archive. Basically, every all time we've been archive. in any kind of yeah. newspaper or whatever. Yes. They already did all of our board meetings from the past. Um, which are really funny. They're all going way them. back. Yeah. yeah. Just, okay. So they're working on that, which is a pretty big job, right? You have to scan everything, save it, archive yeah. it. It's pretty tedious. But then maybe we can get rid of some of that paper, man. This is true. This is true. <laughs> get rid of the paper. Good. And well, then maybe we'll know where to find the stuff in the future. Right. So where are these volunteers coming from? I know we always have volunteers from different places, but well, who are we working one with One is from around Milan. And she hadn't gone home for such a long time because her parents are both in healthcare. So she didn't even go home for Christmas. Oh, poor and thing. she said they her, both of her parents got their vaccine so um, she can go back. Oh, good. And they're from the University of Trieste or from where? Uh, yeah, they're from Lingua Literatura from the University of Trieste. And uh, there's a guy and he's from Puglia. Puglia, yeah, Barletta. So that's pretty far away. I'll say it's nice getting yes. these volunteers in, getting some fresh blood in, right? Yes. We've always had volunteers, but um, some of you may or may not know that we have this long-standing agreement with several entities, but especially the university, where we give students the opportunity to have several hours of uh, volunteer work, work experience. And mm -hmm. since Suzanne is working on this um, documentary, I think that'll get. Be be a nice opportunity for some of these volunteers to get some real yes. um, experience doing something interesting too. Well, some of it's not interesting, but you know, the scanning yeah. might be boring, but I think some of the documents are interesting, right? Well, in normal times, we would have three or four interns here mm -hmm. uh, working at the front desk, checking in and out books, answering the phone, taking temperatures, all that kind of stuff. And this year we had two interns from the School of Parent Therapy and they had 150 hours to do. So there's not that much work for them. So they ended up finishing up someplace else doing virtual because I think they were both from, one was from Naples and the other was from Sicily. So they're both at home. But the students today said they're gonna start in-person lessons again. Nice, so okay, so maybe that'll bring, you know, bring them back to Trieste. And then we have an agreement, a new agreement with CHOPS, which is a vocational school in town. Um, and they're going to send over a high school student who is in her second year, who's gonna work with Francesca, do we, do we, learning some administrative stuff in English. She speaks super, super good English. Oh, good. And uh, I don't know if she knows she's coming here, so I don't wanna reveal who it is, because I'm not sure she knows yet that she's coming <laughs> here, because they like to kind of keep the uh, suspense up until the until they're ready to come in. I think it'll be the end of, end of the month. You're going to be working with Caroline. We're yeah, well, I have to uh -oh. like convince her that she doesn't have to work with me. Otherwise, she might not come. But you this know, is it is. so I wanted to ask you what you did this weekend because the weather was super nice again. We we stayed home mainly. We're kind of homebodies, especially this past year. 
mm -hmm. and worked in the yard and we still had fires because in the evening it's still cool so we have all that wood to burn you know well we need some wood we used up all of ours now we just we have all this wood it looks like we have a lot of wood but it's for next year <laughs> we ran out of all our good year you know because there was that period where it's like every evening all I wanted to do was make a fire and then I was I was working from home on zoom and so I was just starting the fire in the morning and just keeping it going the whole time but all right we ran out of wood or I think now we have some but we have to we have well, to chop it. I'm trying to burn a lot of wood because our neighbors keep giving us wood because they don't have fireplaces nice. and I don't know we don't I don't know where we're putting all this stuff so Andrea will say you want a fire tonight and I'll say yeah he said, I don't want to fire. So I've already got it all ready. All I have to do is light the match. Light it. And there, we're, there you go. Well, so pretty that's, soon, that's my philosophy. Pretty soon we can start grilling at your house. You've got this that outside is, yeah. grill too. Yeah. You know, well, you so. guys can grill all the time with that gas thing yeah, that you've got set up. Yeah, fun. Not as fun as at your house. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I want to say, so we went to the mountains this weekend. We went out, well, near Tarvisio because it's where all the Triestini go right now. Because I think everybody's stir crazy from being inside so much. So you just want to be outside. There's that nice, the wild track. It's by Saizera, I think it's called. Uh, and just as we went with some friends and the dog and... Oh. The kids didn't even complain because it was just so nice to be outside and mm. there are little places where you could kind of go sledding. The rest was just walking oh. in the woods. And so that was really nice. How's but, the snow now? Is it kind of mushy? Or? No, it's kind of, um, it was kind of crunchy. It was that crunchy oh. snow that's not as fun. And I felt bad for the people with the snowshoes because it wasn't snowshoe okay. type of snow because it was kind of slippery and um it wasn't so deep that you really needed mm. snowshoes, but um, yeah, it was, it's, you can tell we're at the tail end of winter. I, right. I think it'll probably be melted pretty soon. I don't know, unless the temperature goes down again. Do you know anything well, about the forecast? I heard it was going to get cold again, but who knows? It's everybody who wasn't in the mountains was at Grado or Barcola. Oh yeah, going to the, because they're just waiting for the, because okay, the sun was out actually. Oh, I it was a beautiful day. I got a little butter. It was a beautiful Everybody day. Everybody makes fun here. of me because I was like a lobster yesterday. Today In I fact, uh, Grado, they want to close. The mayor asked to become a Zona Rosa. Really? Because there's so many people? Because he doesn't want all those tourists around. Half of the region went to Grado so and the other went to Tarvisio. Yeah, because you can't, exactly, because you can't leave your region right now. But then someone else who was at, oh, we went to go visit um, our little uh, cousins, our elderly cousins yesterday, and they said, well, we were wondering where everybody is. So it's all the Triestini are either at Grado or Tarvisio, because I think mm -hmm. everybody needs some nature, mm -hmm. but we have a tendency to all go to the same places. Oh, well. <laughs> well, anyway. I, I was talking to somebody who lives downtown, and Pina told me that on Saturday it was jam-packed downtown. Really? All the bars. She lives, they live near Cavana, mm -hmm. and everything. It was like, it looked like Barcolana, she said. Really? So many people. Well, and then everything closes at six, like the right. bars and restaurants. So you can't even get a reservation anywhere because everybody, it's like you want to help the local businesses, which is why I think a lot of people are out, not because they want to really be in big groups. Mm -hmm. and, and But I mean, it really because you feel bad for all of these, these uh, bars and restaurants right. that are losing out. So you want to help out, but then at the same time, they've got less capacity. There's, so kind of a weird situation well, I hope we it go we go once a week to my husband's aunt's house they're in our bubble mm -hmm. and we have dinner with them and they look forward to that all week long and they live near Piazza Oberdon which is always jam-packed with cars on Saturday night there's nobody there we 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 eat early at their house so when we leave at nine it's empty there's not a single car in any of that parking area it's nobody yeah everything's but, strange this year Denise and then did. yesterday uh, we, Andrea said, what do you want? I said, what, what would you like for lunch? And he said, the usual, anything's okay. And I said, well, I would like Indian. Mm, so we actually went out to Indian near Viale to, mm. uh, Krishna, where our students, uh, they run the place. Yeah. And there were, there was nobody in the restaurant, but they had a lot of takeaway. Oh, that's good. So at least but, people are... 
we live in such a weird place that if you order it, it's cold by the time it gets there. And so we just went there, just the two of us. So that was nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, because here nobody delivers to where I am. It's like, no. <laughs> because none of the, you know, I live in San Giuseppe where, where the, the numbers on the houses don't correspond to any sort of order. They correspond to the order in which they were built. So it's hard mm -hmm. for delivery places to find us. We found that it's a lot easier for us to just go pick the stuff up right. and bring it home. At least then we can maybe have it a little bit hot. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, so we finished February. So we finished Kindness Month. So we have some ambassadors we need to send yes. our certificates to. So if you are a, a kindness ambassador, if you are extra kind during February, feel free to send us uh, an email to aiaia.fa, fvg would say in Italian, fvg at uh, gmail.com and Denise will send you a, uh, a kindness ambassador certificate, certificate. more the merrier. Yes. Okay. I got mine and you know, I was pretty kind this month. So I appreciated being the first one to receive one. I think, right, Denise? Well, I think so there are a you. lot of adults who did it, but mm -hmm. didn't register. Yeah. That's okay though. They can just tell um, you and we'll send one to them. We don't. Yeah. If yeah. we have their name, if they write their name and their, their first name and their last name, we can, we can get them set up. Oh, so, good. Okay. Because if yeah. not, I've got a couple people who I know okay. were extra kind this month and I'm, I'll give you their names. All right. One of them's name is Great. Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she puts up with us. Yeah. Actually, Suzanne today, and Francesca. She was out. She didn't have interviews in here. She was doing outdoor filming. Nice. So she went to the old places in Trieste of the association. Wow. She went to the Aroma and filmed nice. outside. She went to Via Galati she went to Via Trento. I think she nice. went over in where the original place was near Colleen, where they had the first uh, consulate. Wow. There's a plaque up there. Via oh, Lazaretto. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. You know, I was thinking about the old association yesterday. And what a, you know, and so I've said these fond memories of that place because of the, the library. Just I love the library so much. It's one of the places that made me really love Trieste right away. Just all these books. It's such a such a special room but I think towards the end it was like just we had so much stuff to move, you know we just really need to modernize and so we were happy to leave the place we really love where we are now but uh sometimes I kind of miss that room that you know so much dust. In there. so much so, so much. dusty all those so books dusty. were so dusty mm -hmm. and there was someone who had allergies and oh, yeah she started working thing. on the books and then she couldn't she couldn't do it anymore she couldn't breathe like, well, t right now I'm okay. Everything is in flower here. Oh yeah, yard, allergy people. The buds yeah. are popping and flowers are coming up. And I, I sneezed about a hundred times this morning. Finally, someone at my house noticed, noticed that I was sneezing and they said, bless you. Oh after yeah. After like 101, but like. anyway, they get used to it. Did you respond with my favorite Italian word, which is ormai, meaning like, oh, now you're going to do it, right? right? No, I said it was about time. It's about time, right? It's ormai the, would be a good translation for yes, it's about time, right? About time. Yeah. yeah now you true. bother. Um, so this oh, I week found a cute picture of you. It, it was 2011, so 10 years ago. Wow. And we're in front of a cake. And we had an anniversary, the 60th anniversary of the association. 50th, 50th, then. 50th, 50th. We're going on 60 now. Um, Nikolai is in the picture, Aww. and Anna's in front of the cake, and Ava's in your arms. Like when our kids were precious? Yes, when they were still cute. <laughs> when they were still cute and helpful and sweet. <laughs> and, and that's where we got that philosophy about the cake, that yeah. any, anything is a party if, as long as you've got a cake. As long it was you one of those cake. real fancy cakes. Yeah, I remember being shocked at how much a sheet cake was in Trieste. I'm like, wow, yes. I thought, you know, in America, I don't remember ever paying this much for a cake, but it was probably one of the tastier cakes we ever had. Yes. So, well, like American sheet cake from Costco is just cake with sugar and water. And right. so they had that creamy filling. Yeah, that was really and good. Creamy icing on the top, and it weighed a ton. Chocolate, it was so good. Yeah. yeah, it was a good, and then we ended up doing, we, we found another reason to have a party not long after so we could get another one, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, yes. So we discovered we were we so cute it. in that picture. Oh, you have to share it with me. I, I hope it goes I, the documentary. I gave it to Suzanne. Um, I think she's going to scan it or something. 
Yeah. Oh, I was thinking it'd be yeah. funny to do interviews of like association kids too, because, you know, a lot of our kids actually grew up at the association. A lot of the fun things that we do at the association are because we're volunteers and we want to do fun things that we can include our kids in. So even like Saturday morning story time, even the children's library, these were all Mm -hmm. things that came to be because we had our own, you know, we knew what we were looking for with our kids. So I think it'd be interesting to have someone like Anastasia who grew up at the association, Ava, who's practically born at the association. Um, you know, some of our kids tell their, well, you know, point of view. And didn't you already, or is Suzanne going to talk to? We're, we're interviewing Giovanna Bolteri from the Rai right. because mm -hmm. she grew up here too. Her mom was, a teacher um, awesome. in the 60s, I guess. So wow. she's coming up on, on Wednesday. They're doing a Zoom mm -hmm. Not from China. I think she's in Rome. But nice. yeah. That'd be cool. So you know, and I, here. and I, what my memories, uh, oh, and my daughter had an interview, college interview mm -hmm. the other day. And she put down her volunteer experience in her resume. Mm -hmm. And they said, tell me about these eight years that you are a volunteer <laughs> how is that possible so she really was a volunteer she was, she was one of our best i have to say because she you know she started when she was like a kid she must have been yeah. eight or nine years old and was always really helpful i remember her just being like can i do something it was never and it was really like she wanted to help i thought wow this is a she kid who really around. wanted to do something well helpful. she had to come with me when we did right. those saturday story times mm -hmm. And whenever we had a party, she was there cleaning up. Oh yeah, she helping, had always had helping an kids color. I think we made we made our younger volunteers junior volunteers. Right. So yeah, and, and also even in the classroom, she was helping out in the classroom, having a native speaker kid. You know, she was a great help. So I mean, well, it's it's no lie that she really was. Yeah. Well, a I remember when she was too young to be a volunteer. She must have been around three, and she had beautiful long blonde hair. And I don't know what we were doing, but she got a pair of baby scissors and she chopped all her hair off under the desk. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, I don't remember that. <laughs> yes. And then after that, I had to get her hair cut really short because I can't even it out, right? My kids with beautiful long hair always want to have short hair. Yeah, I suppose. Anyway, it, was like, uh, it was all kind of chopped <laughs> off, and but it really looked cute when we got it cut short. Maybe she was four. Ever. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's a total, that's an association story, right? Because <laughs> we always have those baby scissors everywhere. Each room had a box of them. So, I mean, Just you know, it's not a big surprise. Hide under the desk. <laughs> and there you, go. you can have one in each hand if you wanted, a lefty one even. Um, so I was going to, oh, so this week in the classroom, I just want to tell you that um, we're doing the beat generation. So Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs, and... Can you believe that the day that we sent out the, the lesson, Lawrence Ferlinghetti died? It almost looked like we planned it. I hope, you know, yeah. one didn't that's, cause the other. That's Maybe what I said. I, Don't do any lessons about me. Right, exactly. Why I Because <laughs> you did RBG. We, well, I did her. Did I do her before? Oh, gosh. I, I think she... I don't remember. Was she dead? That was that? pretty close. It was pretty close. I mean, she was on my mind. But I think with uh, Ferlinghetti, I think it was more like he came to us from beyond like maybe he must have just passed and was yes. like please do a lesson on us so we did the lesson um it went out and people are pretty excited about it because i think um there's some some misconceptions about the the beat poets about the beat generation i think that some of the resources in our lesson kind of cleared things up and i loved putting it together because um that's a it's sort of an interesting um uh, movement it's such a man's movement i know there are a couple mm -hmm female beats because I know we even have um, one of the books was donated for the women's library for a woman who was a regular writer in that movement mm -hmm. as well which I read and, and liked but I you know I still think it's just interesting the first sort of real man's movement where people kind of rebelling against what was expected right. of them after the war etc um, and I looked in our library and I found we've got actually we had, I found three books by William Burroughs I found two by Jack Kerouac and that's even after we kind of culled a lot of stuff from our collection so oh. i was happy to say too bad or we can't check things out right now but it's just right. good to know that we have a lot of these important um pieces of literature so anybody's interested eventually can come in and check them out so that's what we're talking about this well, so week. i found that um the documentary that had been made called cafe trieste which is about the um, 
North Beach Cafe, where all the beat generation would hang out, which is still there. I went there two years ago. And, and it was started by Triestini, is that It was story? started by Triestini. And they have a roasting, they used to roast coffee there. And I'd never been there. So when we went through San Francisco, I said, we have to go, we have to go here. And there were no Triestini working there anymore. But they still have all the pictures up of all the beat people. And in the documentary Cafe Trieste, they interview, uh, it was about 10 years ago, they interview some of the people who knew the beat people. But anyway, I was looking through our library because women's book club, this is not beat, but it's um, feminism. We are reading The Fear of Flying. One of my favorite and, books. <laughs> and I found an original. It looks like first edition, Fear of Flying. Oh. This is, must be a super banned book too, because um, it's totally worn out. And there's a lot of writing of translations in in the sides of stuff. That's how you can tell it's a banned book, because if it's yeah, super, super very, worn, very out, worn out, everybody wants to read it. We have Strange other banned books. We kept it when we were cleaning stuff up, but yeah. Yeah, because I think we've got some Kurt Vonnegut banned books too. Because yes. I remember Slaughterhouse Five was banned at my library. And I remember reading at the association for the first time. So <laughs> a lot of the books you couldn't read in high school, you could read. They're at all the here. They're all here. Yeah, yeah, like, I love yeah, it. This is. I saw it was 1975 or something. So yeah, pretty pretty good. Who chose that book? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who would purchase that. <laughs> <laughs> or I maybe it was well. a donation. Somebody had to get rid of it. Who knows? But fear, did you like Fear Flying? You didn't like it? I haven't finished I it yet. Funny. I'm halfway through. Yeah, I'm not to reread it because I don't really remember, but I remember really liking her style. But, you know, anyway, everybody's to see for There's themselves. Some, some controversy in our book club group because we voted on the books mm -hmm. and apparently some of the people didn't, under, didn't re recognize this title and now they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know it was like that. <laughs> I think it's pretty famous for being like that. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing with book clubs too, is like, you know, you win some, you lose some. So some yeah. people might be super happy. Other people might not, might not be happy. I think it's, it's one of the, one of the complicated parts of being in a, uh, in a book club in general. Well, um, one of the but, good things about being a good book club, because maybe you would never have read this. Right. And then you, and now you of, can read it discreetly on a Kindle and your husband won't know what you're reading. Right. Because exactly. I think that you had to read this with like a paper cover on the top so that nobody would know that you're reading Right. This. Make it look like a cookbook. <laughs> yeah. Joy of, not joy of sex, joy of right, cooking. Joy of cooking, joy of cooking, right? <laughs> I have or, actually, I was thinking about that the other day because mm -hmm. I, I don't have the joy of sex, but I do have the joy of cooking. It's a great uh, it's cookbook. It's a great I book. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my mom gave it to me because the authors are also from Cincinnati. No. Bombach is their name. Oh, really? And they're from Cincinnati and there are a lot of funky, like Cincinnati kind of recipes. They've they had the first edition and now they have the second edition. It probably came out 10 years ago. More does modern it have, recipes. Does it have your weird uh, chili three-way, four-way? Probably. Way. I'm sure that that's included. I, you know, it was chili day the other day. I didn't okay. realize until National Chili Day was over, but it was well, chili day. You know, Denise, we're in Trieste. If we can change the day of Thanksgiving every year to the day that works best for us, Saturday instead of Thursday, why can't we change chili day? Just this is true. Just tell this me what day chilly. you want it, and that'll be chilly day. We'll just do it. Well, I'm looking forward to Pi Day. When is Pi Day? Pi Day is March 14th. <gasps> awesome. All and right. The other year, I can't remember how, last was it last year we did Pi? We had the Pi Cook-Off. I think it was two years ago. It was last two year years. we were locked oh, last down. Year, not anything last year. And um, we had some interesting pies. We had the regular traditional pies, and then we had that fish pie. That was, John Deere. With the heads on. that was strange. It was delicious. It was really crazy. It was like a savory pie. Americans don't really do savory pies in that way, but it was, uh, yeah, it had more than one whole fish and with the head yes. sticking out and the tails yes. were sticking out. Yes. Yes. Um, but there were also some amazing there were good pies. I made like, lemon meringue, but of course I would have won, but yeah. I didn't participate as a participant of a grand prize. You should have won. I should have won. I think I, I won, but I, I think it was big. Ring. Or it was should have been key lime, but where are you going to find key limes around? It's hard here? to get limes. Yeah, I don't know. We gotta we gotta 
work yeah. on that a little bit. And then our friend Federica, who like wins everything because she makes everything so yes. amazing. Well, but, I think um, it might have been Isabella that won. Oh, she maybe. made a super made a really good one, Nutella like chocolate, chocolate, chocolate kind of pie. Yeah, I which think she won first prize. And why maybe. wouldn't she? Why wouldn't she? She's so good. This is true. And like anything with chocolate's going to be like. Yeah. Well, you lab that. in Pistoia, Christina started doing a cooking thing hmm. online. Oh, cool. But they're in lockdown. So she does it from her own kitchen. And she did, I think, a, a, a lot of things. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. She made cornbread, but she does it in Italian. Cornbread, scones, uh, hamburger buns, and something else. And I saw pictures of her kitchen afterwards. It was like disaster. Of oh, we're like a real wash. kitchen? Yeah, I, say, like, I would love to do it, except my kitchen work. is already messy. Yeah, I would have just after... done only cornbread. You could do a whole <laughs> hour about cornbread. Rich. I love you did all those in one hour yeah an hour and 40 minutes it came out wow I don't know Pretty courageous yeah Pretty courageous nice she wants to do something with us cool for Easter I don't know do it. what we would do what would you cook right, well. for Easter? what would I cook for Easter something vegetarian obviously I don't know we can think about it okay all right <laughs> something boring nobody wants to eat what I'm making I'll tell you that <laughs> um so Denise, I think that's what we got this month, okay. right? So um, oh, there's some other in. cool stuff. There's Minecraft. If any if anybody loves Minecraft, there's this new game called Farmcraft, Ooh. where uh, it's sponsored by the State Department. Okay. And you can look up Farmcraft and you'll find it. Get a team together and you have to plant your seeds and water and harvest and beat other teams doing the same thing. Awesome. We can get that our teams cool. going on that. That does sound cool. We can have our own team, you and me. <laughs> we can, you, we could do real teams, like with real seeds and in our yards. Exactly. Well, now if the lack, everybody has these like wacko um, gardens after last year, these like super full overgrown because everybody was at home. I don't know what it's going to look like this year. You know, if everybody's going to have these, these yeah, uh, orange gardens and things, we'll see. All right, okay. Denise, I got to go. I got to go to see my you. Go back in the Thanks. classroom. Nice to see you. Okay, glad we finally got um, together. Yeah, so I guess we're going to have to, 11 o'clock is sometimes hard for me to do, but if we can keep Should Monday our day, one? or just keep it to Monday, and then whenever we get here, we get here. I mean, that's okay. how we do everything else, <laughs> right. right? We can, okay. we can, we'll try our Sounds best. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. All right, have a good day. Have, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.